What is up, watch fam? Happy Monday, and welcome to this week's collection review. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and today we're going to be diving into a very heavy Rolex collection and where I think it should go. Let's do it. Before we jump into the collection, a quick wristwatch check. I am wearing a Rolex reference 1803 um, in yellow gold. Beautiful silver dial, um, complete tritium loom plots, tritium matching hands. It's a monster of a watch. I'm an enormous fan of the day date. That is no secret. This watch will be for sale in the watch shop at theoandharris.com soon. But until then, feast your eyes on what we've got. It's always something terrific, whether from Omega or Rolex or Longines, something odd. We have a ton of fun stocking the shop. All right, um, the collection here is, is from a 19-year-old. Uh, I don't know about you guys, when I was 19, I, I mean, I, I actually did have one Rolex. I was very lucky. Um, but uh, but this is some f***ing collection. Um, Chad is is the name. Uh, Chad might be a stripper uh, from all of the, uh, the money he has in watches. I wonder if he paid for these watches in $1 bills. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. No, because it's strippers. Strippers only have $1 bills. He has a lot of strippers that make a disproportionate amount of money. He'd be 19. I think it, definitely in New York. Chad's from LA though. Put that in the video, it's funny. Okay, enough jokes. What does Chad have in the watch box? Um, the first watch he bought right after he turned 19 um, was this watch. It's the reference 116613LB, which is a stupid reference. I'm a vintage guy. I'm nostalgic for, for the, the past for many reasons. And really, the simplicity of the references isn't a big one for me, but geez, it was so much easier. This is an 1803. How easy. This is this is the 116613 LB. Brutal. But it's a great watch. Two-tone submariner, beautiful blue dial. Um, I love the prior iterations of this watch, but really this one, the ceramic, is a home run. The way that the blue, and Chad says this, Chad says this is why he bought the watch. The way that the blue ceramic and dial um is complemented by the gold is so rich. This is not a cheap watch, but it looks like um, it, it costs more than it does. It looks like a rich thing. So I can definitely see why Chad bought it. Very respectable, you know, position of watch collecting. A modern ceramic submariner. But where did Chad go from there? Well, he did some self-reflection and said, listen, I, I, I like, you know, nice brands. I like Rolex. Obviously, he didn't start off with an SKX, right? Which is a wonderful watch in and of its own right. But Chad liked this idea of luxury. He loved the size and proportion of that ceramic Submariner. Um, and he wanted something else. So what did Chad go and buy? This. The reference 116610LV, which sounds just like the prior reference because they're all gibberish and bullshit, but even though it kind of is, it's not. Uh, it's the same watch, but in green. It's the Hulk. A fundamentally very similar watch to his first watch, that blue Submariner. The big difference here is not the color of the bezel, it's the flashiness, right? The Hulk is a much more casual, sporty watch um, than, than the blue Submariner he had before. Um, Chad went and bought this because he looks at himself as a sports watch guy, right? Chad likes to dress casually and wear things that Although he doesn't beat them up, it kind of could get beaten up, right? It's part of his aesthetic. But after the Hulk, when Chad got the itch again, uh, he decided to go right back to that real rich kind of style. Stayed with Rolex. Obviously, Chad uh, is a Rolex fanboy. He does deviate from Rolex, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but he goes with the Sky Dweller in blue. Probably, Chad and I agree on this, probably one of the most beautiful production Rolexes today. Probably one of the most beautiful production Rolexes in the last uh, long time. I hate to put a number on it, but long time. Um, and because it's a Rolex or watch, because the base metal is steel accented in white gold, it's, it looks very rich and it's complicated and it's a wonderful piece, but its price is attainable, at least within the world of, you know, watches that can go into the twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollar marks like it's nothing. Uh, this watch retails around fourteen thousand dollars, fourteen and change. Um, but looking beyond how important I think the watch is, and we did an entire 
very in-depth review of this watch. If you don't know exactly what's going on with this watch and all of its complication, I highly recommend you watch that video. Link is in the description. Um, but I love that he took a step away from the ceramic and into the world of the fluted bezel, right? This showed that Chad was open to... Uh, to, you know, changing his, his pattern a little bit. He was open to experiencing new things. Of course, within the world of Rolex and 40 millimeter Rolex, which is a small world, but still, um, I did like even his micro uh, kind of attempt to change up his style a little bit, right? After the Sky Dweller, Chad goes right back to where he feels comfortable with a Batman, which, although I love the watch, it's getting redundant Chad you're killing me um, I, again I love all these watches independently I don't know how you could own them all and not go crazy many of you I'm sure out there do I know many friends that have four iterations of the same watch or very similar watches and it's usually Rolexes props to you guys wonderful it's just hard to review your fucking collection when, when, you, when you do do that but it, it, but this does get interesting Chad does something radically different with an Atomar Piguet reference 15 300 beautiful white dial steel case I think that this watch masterfully rides the two lines he likes to play with. Um, this richness, which is without a doubt the, the Royal Oak, but still sportiness. And really, he hasn't been able to do so with one Rolex. You know, it's taken basically two Rolexes uh, at a time to achieve that balance. But really, with the Royal Oak, it's done with one watch. And it really shows that Chad is ready to jump into the world of hot horology, right? Into truly well architected and finished movements and for me the writing is on the wall my suggestion to you Chad is obvious you think you're playing in the world of luxury sports casual watches um, and although you are there are a few watches that reign kings of that world um, and I think the right one for you to at least try would be an Aquanaut. I think that its price point, just over $20,000 on the gray slash secondhand market, is attainable for you. Uh, you could liquidate a couple of your Rolexes. Uh, you could trade up into it, no problem. Or you could just drop all the cash, whatever you want to do. But I think that that watch for you will be a bit of a revelation. I think that wearing kind of like a summertime, certainly not blingy watch at all, and still seeing the kind of like watch geek respect that that Aquanaut demands, not just because it's a Patek Philippe and it's expensive, but because it's so well executed, I think that it will open your eyes to what's around you in the world of watches and to see what really gets you going. You know, what really you know, revs your engine or whatever it is. The world of Rolex is wonderful. I am, without a doubt, a Rolex fanboy. But venture out a little bit. You've done it with the AP, continue doing it. And, and, I, and I think that in the future, I mean, what are you, 20 now? You're, you're gonna have so much further to go. You know, you can really develop into a seasoned, uh, well thought out, logical watch collector uh, if you start moving into that world now. Thank you so much for sending your collection in for me to review, Chad. Uh, wonderful shit. Keep on stripping or whatever you're doing for all that dough. So that's it. If you guys enjoyed this review, slam that subscribe button down below and I will see you all tomorrow.